you know if Ben Affleck were playing Batman slash Bruce Wayne in this movie, uh, the case of his missing wife would have been solved the day she vanished. Just saying. <laughs> So Gone Girl is the latest film from director David Fincher, who made films like Fight Club, The Social Network, Seven, etc. And it is based on the 2012 novel by Gillian Finn, who also adapted the film's screenplay. It focuses on a Nick Dunn, played by Ben Affleck, who is out one day but comes home to discover that his wife is missing. And the wife is played by Rosamund Pike. I hope I'm pronouncing that first name right. So he goes out to try to find uh, the case of his disappearing wife, along with his sister, played by Carrie Coon, and uh, his attorney, played by Tyler Perry, of all people, as the plot takes many twists and turns. The less said, the better. Dave, this is very comfortable ground for David Fincher. His primary field is in thrillers and movies that have a lot of twists and turns, like Seven, Fight Club, and his remake of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And it has a lot of his characteristics in the movie. Um, it's got, again, thrills. It's got a score by Trent Reznor and his partner. It's got um, beautiful cinematography by Jeff Cronenwealth, who worked with Fincher on Fight Club, The Social Network, and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. So Fincher is one of those auteur directors, meaning like you look at a movie directed by him, it's pretty easy to tell that it's his work. Like there's something... Like with people like Spielberg, Nolan, or Scorsese, or Hitchcock, there's always something in Fincher's movies that's basically a stamp saying, I did that movie. You're welcome. And also what's expected from him is great performances from his actors. Um, ben Affleck, who I still believe is a better director than he is an actor, is really good in this movie. I mean, I always knew the guy was a capable actor, but... Um, Again, I think he's a better director, but in Gone Girl, he's really good, managing to have like a sense of fear, frustration, just a few situations I don't want to get into too much. And Rosamund Pike is also really good as Ben Affleck's wife, which I can't really describe her performance because I would be spoiling the movie, and I know this is based off a book, but for those people like me who didn't read the book, I'm being considerate for you people. But basically... She is a real. She's really good in this movie. The one actor that actually surprised me was Tyler Perry, um, because of all the Medea movies and the fact that he's just not a good director. I always thought like Tyler Perry, really, but he's actually really good. I mean, it's funny how these auteur directors can take a person that's somewhat considered to be like a joke or mainly there for comedy, and get really good performances out of them. I mean, Scorsese did it in Wolf of Wall Street with Jonah Hill, so Tyler Perry managed to pull off a good performance by being in a David Fincher movie. I also want to point out Carrie Coon, who plays Ben Affleck's sister, twin sister, I might say. Um, she is really good, and not a lot of people are talking about her performance, but because I feel that she very much like is the most... Because I feel like next to Ben Affleck's character, she is the most torn of the main characters. Despite all the stress and all the hell that the characters go through, she manages to stick behind Ben Affleck to the end. So that, I wanted to give special props to her. Now the movie isn't exactly perfect. Um, it is really good, no question about it. Uh, but I feel that it's a little too long. I mean. I was never bored, but it could have been trimmed by 10 or 15 minutes, and I thought the ending was kind of weak. Um, there was a point, I don't want to say anything, but there was a point when I was expecting something to play out, and it just ends, so I'm just like, okay, what's going to happen next? Oh, it's over, okay. And then, if there's one actor I had a problem with, um, it's Neil Patrick Harris. I mean, he didn't do a bad job. It's just, he plays Amy's ex-wife, ex-wife, he plays Amy's ex-boyfriend, and I really had a difficult time believing that he was actually, um, an ex-boyfriend, and I, it does have to deal with the fact that Neil Patrick Harris is gay in real life, admittedly, but that's why we love Neil Patrick Harris, it's just here, 
it's kind of hard to buy the fact. The way he acts in the movie, he comes across more as the gay friend. I mean, the, again, no disrespect. I mean, we all love Neil Patrick Harris. It's just, if there was a weak point in the actors, I think it was him. But other than that, the positives outweigh the negatives uh, by a long shot. It's got great performances, great direction, great music, cinematography. It's just a, another really great movie. I don't think it's best picture worthy, despite the fact that it's possibly going to get nominated. But I really think that this is a good movie that is worth seeing in your lifetime. I still think it's a little too long, but again, it's great regardless. And that's my review for Gone Girl. Leave a comment, tell me what you thought of the movie, subscribe to my channel for more stuff in the future. You can check out my video blog channel, alexg462. You can find links to my Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram accounts on this YouTube page. Go check me out at letterbox.com under the name Mr. Robinson, as well as my written reviews on Geeked Out Nation. Share me with your friends and tell them about me. And this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. See you guys later.